Hello dear students, now we are going to discuss about the INR 9 which is integrated 19 subjects and in this we are going to discuss about anatomical snuff box. So what is anatomical snuff box? Remember it is also known as radial fossa and these are triangular depression, right? These are triangular depression as you can see here. These are the triangular depression where it is located into the lateral aspect of the dorsum of the hand. So we are seeing dorsum of the hand and this is the lateral aspect of the dorsum of the hand. These are the triangular area or triangular depression. What is the location of this anatomical snuff box? They are located at the level of carpal bone. So you will see carpal bones are located here like a scaphoid, trapezium, all these are located here. So best how you can see the snuff box? To see the snuff box, you must have the person with extended thumb. So that is what you are seeing here. The person is having extended thumb. So now you can see the anatomical snuff box is a radial fossa. And by extension of the thumb, you can visualize them. They are located at the carpal bones level. And you can see them best with the extended thumb. So what are the things which you will observe in the anatomical snuff box? As I said, it is a triangular shape. So they will be having three borders. And there will be a floor. And there will be a roof. Right. So these are five things which are constituting this snuff box. So what is the floor made up of? What is the three? What are the three borders? So when you will look at the medial border or which is also called as the ulnar border, look at the medial border or the ulnar border. So medial border is made up of tendon of the extensor pollicis longus. Please remember it is tendon of the muscle called as extensor pollicis longus. So this is the extensor pollicis longus which is reaching up to the base of the distal phalanx. So now you can see this is the extensor pollicis longus muscle which is forming the medial border. Lateral border will be formed by the two important tendons. Tendons of the extensor pollicis brevis and tendons of the abductor pollicis longus muscle. So lateral border is made up of tendon. Again it is tendon. So remember medial border, lateral border both are tendons. Medial border is a tendon of extensor pollicis longus and lateral border is made up of tendons of extensor pollicis brevis and abductor pollicis longus. Abductor pollicis longus muscle and extensor pollicis brevis their tendons will form the lateral border. And what is forming the proximal border? Proximal border, you will see the proximal border, you will see the stelloid process of the radius, right? So stelloid process of the radius will be present here, right? The stelloid process of the radius will be present here, which will be forming the proximal border. Now look at the floor. What you can expect, as I said, it is at the level of carpal bones. So you are going to see the carpal bones which are on the radial side. So who are the carpal bones? They are the scaphoid and trapezium and roof will be made up of skin, right? So these are the structure. These are the contents and borders of the snuff box. Now what are the contents in this snuff box which examiner will ask you? So contents of a snuff box we can remember by a mnemonic called as CAR. What is CAR? Cephalic vein. So now you can see here cephalic vein is going through this triangular snuff box right then you will see the radial artery you can notice the radial artery is going through this and then superficial branch of the radial nerve so you can notice there is a superficial branch of the radial nerve so these are the three important structures which will pass through the anatomical snuff box and remember this is very important to understand what is the clinical correlation with this thing right so what are the two important clinical importance with the anatomical snuff box whenever you find pain and tenderness in this snuff box remember whenever you are finding pain and tenderness in this snuff box that will be suggestive of fracture of the scaphoid bone you can see there discontinuity of the line of the mid portion of the scaphoid. So whenever we find pain and tenderness in this nerve box, that will be suggestive of a scaphoid fracture. Number one, clinical application. Number two, clinical application as a cardiologist, whenever you are going to perform angiography, right? So what will happen? You are going to cannulate the distal radial artery as you can see here. This is the distal radial artery cannulating and you are seeing the angiography. So I hope you would have liked this. Keep learning. Best wishes for your exams.